the first world war was supposed to be the war to end all wars yet we remember how by ending a war europe set the game vote for another europe was in fact preparing for round 2 we do remember how to the unequal treaties many countries were humiliated and they lost many of their possessions germany for example lost many of its possessions and was humiliated by the treaty of versailles the people of germany were therefore desperate to get back what they have lost this brings us to the period of discussion for this chapter which is the interwar period as if the name already does not suggest enough this period was the period between the first world war and the second world war and the post first world war period was therefore nothing but the background for another world war in this period rose up many political ideologies most of them totalitarian in nature and of them the prominent ones were fascism and nazism in this chapter we look at the rise of these ideologies Now before we understand what these ideologies were and how they rose up in power we need to get an understanding of the background behind the rise of these ideologies and also have an overview discussion of what the basic characteristics of these ideologies were therefore in this lesson we will be undertaking an overview of the rise of fascism and nazism The first world war goes down in history as one of the deadliest combats in human history. It left the world with millions dead and a broken Europe as its legacy. But the first world war did come to an end and this happened when the allied nations surrounded Germany from all sides and made it sign an armistice which is an agreement where the opposite party declares that they will lay down their arms the armistice was signed on 11th november 1918 and all over europe this day was celebrated as armistice day and also in many ways the day the first world war came to an end however it officially did not end as there were still conflicts going on and it came to an end when the treaty of versailles was signed a year later and with the signing of this treaty the great war finally came to an end but the end of the first world war brought about many remarkable breakthroughs which even went to the extent of changing the entire political system of europe itself one such breakthrough or change was the decline of the empires so monarchies all over europe especially the monarchies in the states that lost the first world war quickly declined after the first world war and they were replaced by new nations which emerged from these erstwhile empires you can see in these two maps the left one being the map of europe before the first world war and the right one being the map of europe after the first world war how much the map has changed as you can see the prominent empires such as the german empire and the austro-hungarian empire declined and gave way to the formation of new nations such as germany poland czechoslovakia austria hungary romania and yugoslavia among others now this is more than a mere change of borders this had a lot of political relevance so let us see this crucial change brought by the first world war in detail monarchies that stood for dynasties was the usual political structure of europe till the start of the 20th century however at the end of the first world war they started to decline the victorious powers imposed their sitting terms on the monarchs which led to their collapse of power and the allied nations handed the power to the people but they had enough of the monarchies and now gave a call out for democracy a rule of the people they no longer wanted the person to rule over them and wanted their own representatives from themselves and that is why we can see that as a consequence of the war the monarchies are being replaced by republics that are popping up across europe at this time one can thus say that democracy was trending at this time everyone wished to achieve all the benefits the people side demanding democratic electorates where one can vote for their representative of choice and all these electorates were be based on the concept of universal adult franchise which says that any person who is 18 years of age can vote without discrimination the votes given by all was to elect the representatives of the people's choice into assemblies who would make laws keeping 
keeping in mind the demands of the people who voted them in power. Finally, with the representative assemblies, there would be the formation of a government that is stable, effective and responsible, one that is able to handle crisis and look out for the citizens of the nation. Such were the ideals of democracy that was in trend. But as the case goes for most trends, the trend of democracy was also short-lived. Now, what led to the downtrend of democracy in the interwar period? The first issue was the interwar period itself. You see, this interwar period, which is what this period between 1919 to 1939 was called, was a period of instability. This interwar period was marked with economic crises alongside political instabilities, which then led to inefficient efforts of post-war reconstruction. The people who had enough of the pains and horrors of the First World War could simply not forget it as now they had to deal with new problems which included but were not restricted to unemployment, poverty, hunger, lack of living space, diseases and overall discontentment. Things in fact became so bad that people even had to put their own children up for sale. Now we will see such more instances of how bad the interwar period got as we go ahead with more lessons. But what we have to understand is people were now done with the republican governments and instead turned to totalitarian ideologies led by dictatorial leaders such as Hitler and Mussolini. This was a very important feature of the interwar period. But how were the people so quick to dismiss with the very republican governments they brought to power? You will see that now. Before we move ahead, can you answer this question? What was the period after the First World War known as? Was it the interwar period, the post-war period or the after-war period? The correct answer is interwar period. So the reason why the people were so quick to dismiss with the republican governments is because the republican governments itself were flawed. So in the interwar period we saw the people put all their faiths into these republican governments. This was often known as the great experiment. However, these republican governments which came up were extremely corrupt which then frustrated the people. Apart from being corrupt, they also were inefficient in nature. And we also saw how the interwar period was marked with many economic instabilities. And these governments were not at all able to handle these crises. In fact, when they tried to do something positive, it even backfired more. This made the people realize that these corrupt and inefficient republican governments are not capable of handling the crises which their countries are facing. And in fact, at that point of time, it had become like a sinking ship. If the people do not find the lifeboat out of the ship, then they also will drown alongside their republican governments. Now, these republican governments, apart from being inefficient and corrupt, also became increasingly unpopular. This is because these governments, which were mostly formed in the defeated powers of the First World War, had to sign various unequal treaties with the victorious nations and these treaties were humiliating for the nations. Now the people of these nations felt embarrassed that such humiliating treaties have been imposed upon them and they also held the governments responsible as they had signed these treaties without any protest. Therefore the treaties that ended the war were considered to be unequal on the defeated powers and this gathered public discontentment against the treaties as well as the governments in their nations. So we can understand that at this point of time, the people of these nations were looking for alternatives, looking for better options. And this alternative presented itself through the totalitarian leaders who promised these people a stronger nation which would only be established through a strong and stable leadership. A person who has more power than anyone else and also a person who stays in office forever. Now this itself sounds like a recipe for disaster to us. But back at that time, the people felt this is the only option they have to restore the glory of their nation and to also make sure that their countries are not consumed by the crisis of that time. Now, as we go ahead with subsequent lessons, we will try to crack this psychology as to why the people brought to power such totalitarian leaders. What we have to understand now is that seeing the inefficiency of the republican governments in Europe, the people therefore voted for totalitarian leaders in hopes of stronger and stable leadership.
Now, these totalitarian leaders rose up to power as dictators or a leader who holds absolute authority, who has no opposition and whose word is considered to be the law. So these totalitarian leaders rose up as dictators of their own countries and their rise to power was also unopposed by the peace treaties and the international organizations such as the League of Nations because the League of Nations felt that their rise to power is a temporary threat but they could not have been more mistaken. So we can understand that this interwar period, apart from being marked by economic instability, also had adequate amounts of political instability, where we saw that the monarchies declined and made way for the republics. But the republics in their inefficiency and corruption and not being able to deal with the crises finally led to the rise of totalitarian dictatorships. So such rapid transition of power in the interwar period also gives us an understanding that this rapidity of transition was also caused behind the outbreak of the Second World War. Now that such dictatorships came up in Europe, what were some of their characteristics? The first characteristic was that these dictators believed in holding absolute power and this also included holding the power over the people. In fact, dictators control every aspect of life of the citizens. So we see that in many ways, the dictators often made the private decisions for the citizens under the guise of national interests. And while they did that, they also managed to snatch away various rights of the people and also curb their liberties. Since the dictators aimed at achieving absolute power, they wished to do this by expanding the borders of the countries they control. Therefore, these dictators believed in following an imperialist policy where they went on to overpower and annex various weak states. At the same time, these dictators also ruled to have absolute power till the end of their lives and therefore they eliminated all forms of opposition and established a one-party rule where they were the ones leading the single party of the state. Now, these dictators rose up to power on nationalistic grounds and they promised the people that they would restore the glory of their nations. And therefore, when these dictators came to power, they openly violated the terms of the various unequal treaties such as the Treaty of Versailles. This was in fact encouraged by the public itself and the dictators continued to follow this policy. Over here we see a satirical depiction where Hitler, who was a dictator of Nazi Germany, is sneakily getting past the various terms of the Treaty of Versailles, which shows that he is violating the terms of the Treaty of Versailles. Now apart from violating the various unequal treaties, the dictators also refused to cooperate with the League of Nations and often openly ignored the various mandates and resolutions of the League of Nations. League of Nations was not powerful enough to do something about the activities of these dictators and therefore the open defiance to the international order continued. Over here we see another satirical depiction where the League of Nations is attempting to act as a referee when the totalitarian leaders are fighting amongst each other and also trying to overpower various weak states. As you can see, these totalitarian powers are simply unbothered by the presence of the League of Nations and the League itself is powerless in front of them. So let us now meet some of the dictators of Europe of this time. There were dictatorships in Germany, Italy, Portugal, Spain and Turkey around this time. In Italy there was Mussolini, in Spain there was Franco, in Germany there was Hitler, in Portugal there was Carmona and in Turkey there was Mustafa Kemal Pasha. So these are few of the dictators of Europe around this time. Now of all the dictators we just saw, there were two popular dictators who often became synonymous with the idea of a dictator itself. When we often think of a dictator, the images of these two dictators come up in our mind. They are none other than Adolf Hitler of Nazi Germany and Benito Mussolini of Fascist Italy. Now let us see why these two dictators were particularly popular. These two dictators were able to gather an army of followers simply through their charm and persuasion. Now, While this seems like something straight out of a dramatic movie, this is true. In fact, 
through their public appearances and their many speeches these leaders managed to build a cult of personality around them where the common public started to worship these leaders as the harbingers of change so you can understand how popular these leaders became the dictators also adopted various popular names for themselves and then made it their own titles these titles were often the names the public called them so we see that hitler took up the title of der führer which in german means the leader while mussolini picked up the title of il duce which again in italian means the leader so we understand that these leaders not only picked up titles which showed their power and popularity but also somehow wanted their names to be associated with the idea of a leader now to achieve peak popularity for their ambitions and policies these dictators created ideologies surrounding such ambitions and policies and these ideologies soon became very popular and reached the minds of every single person of their countries now in their rise to popularity and power these leaders managed to make their ideologies synonymous to their own identities so that even if a person forgets what they look like they will not forget their ideologies and that is why mussolini came up with his ideology of fascism and hitler came up with his ideology of nazism nazism in fact was influenced by fascism and since these two ideologies had similar origins often it is considered to be twin ideologies and their own leaders were very close allies the rise of these two ideologies which is nazism in germany under hitler and fascism in italy under mussolini are often considered to be one of the most important events of the 20th century itself and in many ways they led to the outbreak of the second world war now as we continue with this particular chapter we will be looking at each of these ideologies in detail we will try to understand its origins its meaning also trace its rise to power meet the leaders who led them to popularity and prominence and also trace its impact and significance at the same time we also would be attempting a comparative analysis between these two ideologies to see where they are similar and on what points they differ finally then we will come to a conclusion as to how these two ideologies and their rise led to the outbreak of the second world war don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon you can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the delta step app to learn one to one with our amazing teachers or to get access to all our 5000 plus amazing videos as per your school syllabus master each topic with our adaptive practice technology get million plus questions with step by step solutions and unlimited mock tests get all your doubts resolved instantly learn via games and win amazing prizes like playstations and ipads so at delta step learning is not just fun and easy it is rewarding too so register for free now